Hi everyone, we're going to talk this time about standing waves in pipes. Um, a standing wave is a wave that does not appear to move, but it stays stationary in space. Now, it really is a moving wave, but we're continuously adding energy at the correct frequency to make it stay in one place and vibrate. Now, where are you going to see standing waves in pipes? Uh, pipe organ, pi big pipe organs that are in theaters or churches, situations like that. Um, any sort of a wind instrument, everything from a clarinet to a flute to a trombone is a pipe instrument. Um, a lot of mechanical situations, everything from an engine to a venturi tube to a carburetor where you are blowing air through something that can create resonance in that tube or pipe. Um, a wind tunnel, you're blowing air through a, a long pipe and you can get resonance there. And in our own human ear, there is a closed end down here and in that auditory canal. Now there are two different kinds of pipes. Uh, one's called an open pipe, the other one is called a closed pipe, and we're going to talk about each. But to define both, an opened pipe is a pipe that has both ends of the vibrating pipe are open. Now it sounds kind of redundant, but what I mean is, uh, for example, this lady who is playing her flute, um, her mouth is not pressed tight against that flute. She's blowing air down into the flute, but this end of the flute and that end of the flute are both open so that air can freely oscillate into and out of that flute. Um, if you have any sort of an open chamber that the air can come in and go out, that can be an open pipe. Sometimes you'll see a bridge, um, a bridge that air will flow into and out of, and that will sometimes hum or get a harmonic kind of a howling noise that when the when the wind is blowing just right out of the right direction, you can get kind of a, an, a harmonic resonance in there. Now a closed pipe is a pipe where one end is closed off. Most wind instruments are closed pipes. If you have to put your lips tight against one end of the pipe, um, there is no place for resonant air to escape into the, into the room. Um, but the other end, sound waves can come out of. So most wind instruments are going to be closed pipes, and also our auditory canal is a closed pipe. This end with the eardrum is closed, and then air is free to oscillate or enter through the other direction. So first off, we're going to begin by standing talking about standing waves in open pipes. Remember, open pipes, both ends are open, and the fundamental frequency of vibration for a standing wave in an open pipe is going to be one quarter wavelength, and there's going to be an antinode at each end of that open pipe. So if this is my open pipe, um, there is an antinode at each open end. That means there is a node in the middle. Now the entire length of the pipe is going to be equal to one half wavelength. And what that means is this portion is one quarter wavelength and this portion is one quarter wavelength and all together the whole thing is one half wave. Now we're drawing these as a transverse wave, but they're actually compression waves. So what that means is compression waves, as we've talked about, are much harder to draw, but there's going to be a compression at this end, a compression at that end, and a rarefaction, very few, uh, a low density pressure wave in the center of one of these open pipes. In the same way that we made a chart for strings, I'm going to ask you to draw with me as we make a chart for open pipes. Now the fundamental mode of vibration is one half wavelength, and it's going to have an antinode at both ends, and that is also going to be called the first harmonic. Now each one of these goes up by one half wavelength, so the fundamental is a half wavelength. The next one is two half wavelengths. We have to have an antinode at both ends. So in my mind, this always looks to me like a piece of wrapped candy, hard candy, or a cough drop. Um, so you have an antinode at this end, antinode at that end, and a whole half wavelength here. So this is one half wavelength in the center, here's a quarter wave, 
here's a quarter wave. You add up all the pieces and you have one complete wavelength. This is the first overtone or the second harmonic. The next more complex waveform is going to be three half wavelengths. And that's going to look, to me, this always looks a little bit like a bikini top. Uh, I'm not exactly symmetrical in my drawing, but you have an anti-node here, anti-node here, um, and half wave, half wave, quarter, quarter. So here's your quarter, here's your quarter wavelength, and each one of these is one half wavelength. Second overtone, third harmonic. And remember, each one of these has two sets of names because they've been named through the years by physicists and by musicians. The next most complex waveform, four half wavelengths, uh, and then of course five half wavelengths. You can see the trend. So this is going to be one, two, three half wavelengths, anti-note at each end. This one is going to be one, two, three, four half wavelengths, anti-note at each end. And this will be the third and fourth overtone and the fourth and fifth harmonic. All right, if you needed to hit pause to get, capture any of that in your notes, fabulous, please do that. And when you're ready, keep going. Next, we're going to talk about closed pipes. Now, in a closed pipe, this is a very often a wind instrument where one end of the wind instrument is tight against your mouth, and then the rest of it, the air, can be compressed and rarefied out the other end of the instrument. The fundamental mode of vibration for a closed pipe um, has, is one quarter wavelength with a node at the closed end and an anti-node at the open end. So if we take a pipe, put it on its side, a node on this end, an anti-node at that end, and the entire length of the pipe will equal one quarter wavelength. Again, we're drawing this as if it's a transverse wave, but we're talking sound waves. So these are longitudinal or compression waves. So at the closed end where we have a node, we're going to have a rarefaction and we're going to have a compression out at the open end of the pipe. So let's draw our waveforms here. These, the first one is one quarter wavelength, node at this end, anti-node at this end, gets a little awkward to draw. That's our fundamental or our first harmonic. Now these are odd multiples. These are odd multiples of one quarter wavelength. So the next one is three quarter wavelengths. We're going to have a node at this end, anti-node at this end. So we're going to have a half, there's my half wavelength, and then another quarter. So here you see that half waveform. And here's our one quarter waveform. That's our first overtone or our second harmonic. The next, since we're going up by odd multiples, is going to be five quarter wavelengths. So one, two half wavelengths, and then another quarter. So this is a half, this is a half. Here's my quarter, and we're going to end up with two quarters, four quarters, five quarters. Second overtone, third harmonic, this will be seven quarters, nine quarters. You can see the trend each time we add another quarter wavelength. Always make sure we have a half a quarter wavelength on the end. One, two, three, four, and yes, my drawings are not perfect. Apologize for that. And we go up third, fourth, and fifth harmonic. All right, that will do. Next video, we're going to come back and we are going to do a couple example problems. So we'll see you then. Bye.